Um, hello, and welcome to another one of our uh, series of uh, videos in association with Fujifilm. We're here with, uh, this time, a 760 series zoom endoscope. Um, so actually, you would have seen the video before this was a video where we didn't have a zoom endoscope. We just had a standard, um, I think, a therapeutic gastroscope, and we were looking at a similar situation. Here, no prizes for spotting the problem. Uh, we're in the esophagus. We're in the distal esophagus of a relatively elderly gentleman. Um, and you can see the problem, right? But this is about, okay, uh, characterizing that and deciding what the next stage of treatment is. Now, we shouldn't overstate or understate the benefits of cross-sectional imaging. You must, in this situation, if you find something that you think looks like a cancer, but I think that everybody watching this could assume that that is a cancer, you must perform cross-sectional imaging. You must assess uh, metastatic status, you must assess nodal status. Um, PET scanning, I think, is ideal mm -hmm. in this situation. You want to think more than that. Then what's the next step here for you, PTM? So, again, again joined by PDM Portmans. Um, tell me. Um, yeah, an endoscopic assessment of this lesion. Um, Can we tell anything from this frozen image? Uh, apart from the fact that one at the bottom is not frozen, but this one big image, does yeah. it tell us anything? Well, it's spontaneously bleeding, uh, there's a mucus cap and it's uh, bulgy, so this to me is... Is there any suspicion that this might be deeply invasive from this image? I, mean, I would think maybe not necessarily into the muscle, but deep submucosal I would uh, suspect, yes. And what's pushing you that way? Well, the fact that it's, um, it's growing like, I mean, bulky, Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's spontaneously bleeding are some features that I would think it's more advanced than just. Well, let's, un let's unpack that a bit. So, those two things, bulky and spontaneously bleeding, in Barrett's, no. In squamous, yes. So, in squamous disease, absolutely, bulkiness is definitely equivalent to deep submucosal invasion, or at least submucosal invasion, mm -hmm. which in, in squamous is not necessarily as. Is, is a worse thing than in, than in adeno, mm -hmm. which we're looking at here for sure. We're at the junction, okay, we're embarrassed, we skipped a lot of steps. So this, deeply invasive, from this image, has to involve architectural um, distortion for me, or, or clear, and is, do you see that here? Like that the lumen is not the correct shape, that there's some drawing in of the folds, um, that there's some big depression in this thing. There's not a big, Depression, I would say the lumen isn't completely round, but it's not, yeah. It's not a big, so. like yesterday in the last no. video, we saw this fold coming in. We don't see that here. We'd like to no. look a little closer. And ulceration would be the other thing. Um, for you, is there ulceration here? It's difficult to assess. You have the fibrin on the top. Um, Okay, I think that's a good point, although I suspect not. And mm. ulceration requires you to be deeply denuded of your epithelium. I think what we have here is, as you said, um, fibrin on the surface. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not much information from the overview, to be honest. We can see that this is in Barrett's esophagus. We can see that here we have the top of the gastric folds, like around about here, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so there is a C0MX Barrett's, maybe five, four. Uh, and this lesion is at the top. This lesion is in the typical orientation or not for a Barrett's type lesion? Well, let's have a look because we just don't know what orientation we're in right now. Stomach distends poorly, but I think it's also something to do with the um, insufflation here. So we'll just put quite a bit of insufflation and see if we can uh, improve that. So actually this would be neutral orientation. Mm -hmm. If we now come back up the lesser curve here, it's also a nice fundic product there. And now we bring it into correct orientation. Now, where are we with it? So, yeah, it's not it's in the suspected the yeah, orientation of two to four. Okay. And then uh, the next step is to characterize it, right? So we go up close and because we cannot see anything here, I think it's fair to say that the surroundings are probably not really involved. Mm. There are some other interesting features here in this Barrett's esophagus, which we could highlight, but what would you do now to make it clearer? I think try to use water, try to flush. Yeah, so first thing is to make sure your water jet is not on maximum, mm -hmm. which it isn't, and maybe we have to turn it up. Because you don't really want to completely destroy the architecture. Almost certainly you're not gonna get preserved architecture anyway, but let's see what happens when we try to remove this surface um, exudate with water. 
So we're going to need more water jet than that, please. Yep. Do you think this is adherent um, mucus, or do you think this is food, or what do you think this is? Mm, I don't think this is food. This is either mucus, fibrin. Let's try and get an image, because we do have the cap on. Let's try and get an image of what's underneath. So to do that, we have to add magnification because we're underwater. We probably need maximum, I think. So right now we're not, you see some of this fibrin's coming off mm -hmm. on the edge, but not all of it. So let's go maximum with the water jet, yeah. And where it came off, you see it's bleeding. Yeah, so this is calm, but you still can get a vascular pattern underneath. So that's what we're gonna try and achieve. Starting to be a bit more effective, I think, now. Yep. Still, we are struggling to remove it completely. It's quite mobile. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. That's a good sign in terms of sign. deep invasion, but it's also... Uh, so let's see what we can see here, right? So if I just get you a frozen image uh, here, can you tell something from that? Other than spontaneous bleeding, not so much. Cannot yeah, really I agree. So this is not a great animal. image. How can we improve it, do you think? Maybe add some more magnification because we're really up close. Yeah, we can add more magnification. What else could we do? Maybe virtual chromoscopy. Yeah. I think that's maybe the best thing we can get in white light. Doesn't really help us. Mm -hmm. Virtual chromoscopy. Yes, absolutely. And so in this case, BLI. So there's bleeding, so we can't do it, right? I mean, wrong. Mm -hmm. You just need to put water in. Your case, you need to find it again, which sometimes can be a challenge, and I'll show you how to do it. But if you lose something underwater, you've got two options. One is to take out the water, then relocalize it. The other is to be a bit more careful than I was with what you're doing underwater. So we kind of come back on to it. Water jet a bit. No, I think, unfortunately, we need it because of the degree of bleeding. Mm. Very difficult to... Mm. Um, Asset saying anything. I mean, you can see something, right? I, I think see some regularity, but it's definitely um, there's an irregular pattern as well. Yeah, there's an irregular pattern, which is also associated with surface surface fiber in deposition, right? Mm -hmm. So this, for sure, is um, something. Are we getting a better image now? I would say, yep. with a pretty irregular vascular pattern, I would say. Mm -hmm. So based upon that, we can conclude that this may well be deeply invasive. Okay. You can see the sort of degree of great imaging you can get off this scope. And so this is the very clear difference between this endoscope uh, and the one we used last time. And then if you want to see it better in something that's much easier to image, then you can just have a look at the microstructure of this Barrett's with this endoscope. And OK, it's, it's beautiful. OK, one other thing I want to show before we I mean, maybe be thinking about what we're going to do with this um, is just the, there's a bit of around here buried Barrett's esophagus, which I think is interesting. Let's see you have a little bit of maybe inflammation here. Let's go white light so we can do detection. Um, and in here, somewhere before, I thought I saw I some buried barrels. I think. No, somewhere around here, yeah. So here you have a little, I mean, I don't think patients had therapy before, but you do have a little island which you suspect is related to either biopsy or, because this doesn't really happen without therapy or ulceration which has healed, right? And you can also beautifully see that with the scope. So cap is controlling the focal length, not so easy to see in, um, white light, LCI very nice for the vessel pattern, right? Uh, but then this is, this is where the gold is at, I think. Underwater, with this sort of imaging, you can clearly see, in contrast with mm. the, um, the other Barrett that we just saw in the lesion, completely regular uh, pattern. Mm. Um, okay, and, and of course, I mean, yeah, we didn't start at the start, but for, for assessing these Barrett's, you would perform an overview, would make sure there's no other lesions. You would certainly want to assess the two to four o'clock arc to make sure that it is free of anything else, because yeah, we, we want to resect the most high-grade thing. And then just something interesting here, which is finally something which you may see quite a bit out in your endoscopic practice. What is that? Um, that is uh, magnification looking like some sort of wart, probably. Like your skin's been in the bath too long, maybe. Uh, and that, I think, is a squamous papilloma. I mean, of course, you have to be careful um, of, of these things. Uh, this is not so small, is it? It's getting probably towards the size of the endoscope cap, mm -hmm. which is 
nine, a bit, yeah. uh, ten, ten milligrams. So um, I think the jury's out on whether these are pre-malignant. Um, I think they're probably, in most cases, they are not. But on the other hand, uh, this is a high-risk situation, high-risk patient. We want to be sure uh, about this. So of course, if you're not sure, in the upper GI tract, what should you do? Biopsy. Biopsy. Okay. Perfect. Well, I think that's everything we wanted to show. Uh, we will go ahead and um, uh, this patient is elderly and comorbid. We will go ahead and resect this lesion with ESD. Um, and we will make sure before we do that the depth of excision is going to be adequate by using a tunnel. Thank you very much for watching.